have to be a monster to defeat a monster, and what if turning you into one is the monster's goal in the first place? It's time for the final battle as the show pits the killer without a conscience against his desperate son who has lots of people he needs to keep alive. Too bad the killer is one of them. Episodes 29 to 32 WECAP over a montage of the Jin dealing with discrimination through adulthood, he narrates, for 12 years, I reminded myself I'm a murderous son. I couldn't smile at myself in the mirror because next to me, Yoon Hee Jae is always there. But even for people like me, there is a paradise. In a similar manner, we get a montage of the things Jae Yi endured after losing her parents while she narrates, For 12 years, I lived as a victim's child, suffering from memories of that night. But even for someone like me, there's a person I can rely on. Finally, we see the missing pieces of that tragic Christmas Eve. Yoon Hee Jae knocks Namu down and drags NAK1 away. Namu tackles Dad into a table, surprising him into anger. Dad raises the hammer against Namu while the latter begs NAK1 to run, but she's frozen at the sight of her parents' bodies. It's a good thing Dad can't actually bring himself to kill his favorite son, instead throwing Namu on the floor and telling him to go home so he can kill NAK1. Namu tells Dad his ten minutes are up as the police sirens wail on cue. When he turns his back on them to check, Namu takes out his own hammer and bashes his father on the head. The rest of it is stuff we know. Dad proudly congratulates his son for being ruthless and tells him to remember this moment. Then he escapes after promising to meet NAK-1 again. NAK-1 crawls over to Namu and cries as she holds the hand he used to hit his father. In the present, we see an unconscious Jae Yi tied up inside Dad's old dog farm as her voiceover continues, When will our long nightmare end? Yu Ra leads Da Jin to the dog farm, hammer in hand, as his voiceover answers, Our nightmare will end now. We rewind to a few days before Jae Yi's abduction, right in the middle of the Yoon Hee Jae manhunt. Even reporter Han does her part by publishing an article that highlights the victim's suffering to emphasize that Yoon Hee Jae needs to be caught to pay for his crimes. Nam Gil is mad because he wants articles that focus on the murderer and his violent son. But Han wants to start treating Do Jin based on how he's lived his life so far. Thanks to Do Jin's bitter lesson pills, she realized she was using journalism as an excuse for her biased assumption that she's better than a murderous son by default. A view that Nam Gil still holds on to, as she points out. Mu Wan, possibly the only prosecutor in the district, drops by Hyun Mu's hospital room and reads out his list of crimes. He knows Hyun Mu was injured trying to save So Jin and Mom and tells him that just like how they will be scarred by Ji Hong's and Dad's attacks, Hyun Mu's victims' lives will never be the same, too. Mu Wan gets up to leave after telling Hyun Mu to pay for all his crimes. Hyun Mu knows Mu Wan didn't visit just to review his case. He asks Mu Wan to tell him how he paid for his crime. A convict like him wouldn't have anyone to tattle on anyway. Mu Wan shares that he was 12 years old when he stabbed his parents' murderer. It was only later that he learned he's also a murderer. Judge ruled it was self-defense, but Mu Wan was deeply troubled as a kid. It took him a long time to open up to his adoptive family. He was too scared to even look at his hands, but NAK1 held them like his past didn't matter. To answer Hyun Mu's question, Mu Won knows a lifetime isn't enough, but he's paying by protecting the people who took him in and gave him a second life. Which is a segue to warn Hyun Mu that NAK1 is his family and he'd better not hurt her, or else. Hyun Mu is not to be out older brother as he says that Namu was probably operating under the same thought. Whatever he did that night, he did it to protect NAK1 so Mu Won should stop treating Namu like he's a monster who'll suddenly hurt NAK1. Then Hyun Mu awkwardly adds an apology for Jae Yi before Mu Wan leaves. Mu Wan runs into Dae Jin outside the door. They exchange details about Yoon Hee Jae's case before Mu Wan mans up and tells Dae Jin to take better care of Jae Yi who has a habit of hiding her own pain. He also checks that Dae Jin is okay with hunting down his own father. Dae Jin catches Hyun Mu trying to act tough and attacks him with awkwardness by thanking him for saving Mom and So Jin. He promises to forget everything his brother has done so far, except hurting Jae Yi. For that, Da Jin asks him to apologize in person. He also asks him to let them visit him in prison. And to not go far because he has a place to return to now. 
We know Hyunmu likes that but for the sake of accuracy, we will put down in writing that, Hyunmu doesn't answer, instead, he asks if Dajin was really planning to kill Dad that night, wondering if the idea didn't bother him. Dajin answers by asking why Hyunmu threw away his hammer. Hyunmu scoffs that it's obvious, hammers and glaring isn't Namu's thing. Hyung knows Dad and him are monsters, but Namu is human he'll never cross the line, is what Hyunmu hopes for, but he gets a worried look as he remembers Dad's plan to break and fix Dajin. He tells him to be careful because Dad is weirdly obsessed with turning him into a mini-me. Dajin comes home to Jay Yi's not so stellar cooking but he slaps on a smile and surreptitiously drinks water while she happily chats about her work. Jay Yi coos over her perfect boyfriend from the perfect eyes to the perfect nose to his pretty hands that save lives. After dinner, Dajin offers to visit Jay Yi's mom together. Later that night, Jay Yi has a nightmare about Namu hitting Dad while Dajin is busy worrying over how to catch Yoon Hee Jay. But they cope by reassuring each other and just staying together. Jay Yi says in voiceover, When I was 16 years old, time stopped. Twelve years later, it started moving again. We're trying to be happy again. Dajin is dressing up to meet with Jay Yi and visit her parents' memorial when he gets a call from Yu Ra. She claims to be taken hostage and wants to surrender. Dajin smartens up and tells Jong Hyun to look out for a trap. He also calls Jay Yi to let her know he'll be late. She tells him not to worry since she's with manager Pio in a police escort. Apparently, that isn't enough since it only take a damsel in distress chick for Yu Ra to lure one cop out of the car while Yoon Hee Jae sneaks up on the other. Dad breaks manager PYO's window and Pio opens the door to meet his dear, go head to head with Yoon Hee Jae to give Jae Yi time to escape. But Yu Ra is already opening the passenger's side to knock Jae Yi out. Tijin answers a call from Jae's phone and goes berserk to hear Dad talking instead. Dad drops the hint that he visited Jae Yi's parents and says he wants to meet his son. Alone. Tijin of course disobeys Dad and calls Mu Wan right away, telling him to keep looking for Jae Yi even if he loses contact with Tijin. Mu Wan is shocked to hear that his sister is in danger again, but he tells Tijin to hang in there. He won't be late this time and he'll save them both. Tijin arrives at the columbarium to find Yu Ra there. She discards his phone and tells him to go inside for Dad's gift. This is the hammer we saw him picking up among the flowers last week as he prepares to become a monster once again. To